Hey everyone, it is Saturday, August 12th, 2017, and it's time to go to work on music. Uh, it's been a great day so far, in an excellent place, and excited for a productive session. I'm back in the groove, timing issues have, again, for the moment, been resolved, and um, just working on building in all the habits, locking in those good habits to make sure that I stay on track forever. So, feeling great. Uh, gonna hit some online classes, got a longer session planned for today, which is awesome. Got a full four hours, so we're going to capitalize. Um, hit some online classes, probably go pretty long on those more than I would normally because I've got some time. And that is a big priority right now, getting through the business class in particular. Um, I'm going to do a relatively light drum practice. Instrumental growth is not the priority for me right now, but I, uh, I do like to progress even if it's slowly. And uh, then we're going to save a lot of time to knock this solo out today. Um, Ultimate goal would be learn the solo, get a sound, and then get some rough takes down. That would be huge. Um, I do not know if I'll get that far, but it would be great even just to get the entire solo learned. That would be a huge win today, and maybe even start working on the sound. So it might be kind of a knockdown, drag out affair. <laughs> I'll talk you guys through as much as I can as we go. Let's get right into it. Okay, just gonna give my hands and brain a, a rest here while I'm learning this solo. Um, I'm realizing that part of the solo is probably gonna incorporate some pretty serious bending of notes and strings. And uh, bends are not something I do a great deal of in my playing, mostly just because they're very energy intensive. And so I adapted to that when I was doing more live performance stuff where I was playing like four or five different instruments during a show for hours at a time, maybe more, especially during rehearsals um, and writing and stuff. Um, I realized that bending the notes was just like really, really taxing. Um, so when I went to go play drums or you know something like that, it was just like a lot of wear and tear on me. So I sort of adapted my style to use more slides, and that's why you probably don't hear me or see me bend a lot of notes. Um, sometimes on records, I do it more, uh, just because that's an environment where I'm a little more free to uh, do whatever I want and then, like, rest. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do right now, and I might change that as time goes on, I'm, I'm not sure. I still am experimenting with this part, but it sounds like the bends are going to be a way to go. So just to give myself a little break, and then I'll go back to that in a sec, I'm going to unbox my Roland TD-12, and I figured I'd just do it live on the video. Um, came in the mail the other day from a very reputable eBay seller. And I'm excited, guys. You know, if I'm honest, I really wanted to get one of these. Let me not do this at the same time. I really wanted to get one of these um, years ago when I was first getting into using electronic drums. Uh, the main reason, well, part of the part of the reason I got into using electronic drums and moved away from acoustic drums, which is what I began playing on many years ago, is that when I was doing a lot of live looping stuff, to have the microphones on the acoustic drums, first of all, created a lot of setup problems. Uh, tuning was an issue, you know, constantly having to revise the tuning of the drums. And the main thing was bleed. So like if I had a PA going and then I would uh, loop something on the drum set, everything that was being played through the PA would get doubly recorded as spill into the drum mics. And that created feedback issues and there were just more moving parts and things to break and things to go wrong basically during a live performance. And like the live performances were so technically complicated by themselves, even just musically, that it just made absolutely no sense to, to do that. So the electronic drums was a compromise because I figured if I could get something that sounded really good, then that would eliminate the feedback and bleed issues, would give me much more control over the overall sound, especially live and also would be easier to break down and set up, easier to replace, um, easier to change sounds on the fly, easier to just, you know, just have more flexibility. Now, the added benefit, which was also important at the time because I didn't necessarily have a ton of money, if I'm honest, at that phase of my career. Um, so I um, was able to save, like the, basically the electronic drums paid for themselves in the saving of studio costs. So I didn't have to have a rehearsal room to play drums or practice my live show live or do recordings or anything like that. So these have paid for themselves many times over because in the San Francisco Bay Area, you know, those rehearsal rooms can run four, five, six hundred dollars a month, even for like the lowest end stuff. Um, and if you split it, you know, that's great, it brings the cost down, but then you can't use it 24-7, someone else is in the studio, that requires coordination, and that's something I just didn't want to deal with. So this seemed like a good compromise, and it's worked out extremely well for me, I've been very, very happy with it. And it also cuts down on my commute time, like I can just record from home instead of having to commute to a studio, and that soaks up the time I could be spending getting better, or learning, or that kind of stuff, you know. Not that you can't learn on the fly in the car with podcasts and stuff these days. So, with that in mind, the reason I did not get the TV 12 the first time around is it's kind of big, and um, it requires a little bit more uh, setup as far as... Um, wiring goes and plugging into computers goes. The Alesis was more just like a plug and play thing, which was really good. I just cut toward myself. Don't do that. That was a mistake. Didn't mean to do that. Always cut away from yourselves. Um, and I was almost tempted to do it again then. Ooh, look at this thing. Oh man, guys, this is exciting. Um, so yeah, so this 
as you can see, this is this is probably about four times the size and weight of the Alesis uh, Trigger I.O., which I've been really happy with for the live performance thing. Um, just a lot simpler, but you give up some flexibility and you give up some control over the sound because uh, this is designed to work with the rolling pads and use all the triggers in them, whereas the Alesis Trigger I.O., it just takes advantage of only one of the triggers that is in uh, the drums, and the drums have three triggers each. So this is going to allow me to take better advantage of that, which is actually in there. And this will just give me a lot more sonic flexibility um, as far as the nuance of drum sounds that I can record. And these were also very expensive at the time that I was looking into them, and they're much more difficult to replace. They also require um, MIDI to talk to the computer, so I'm realizing now I'm probably going to need a MIDI box to get this to work appropriately, which is a bummer, but I will figure that out. And maybe the Trigger I.O. can help me with that, actually. Just need some MIDI cables. Um, but this does not go USB directly into the computer, whereas the Trigger I.O. does. So that was just like straight up, plug everything into the Trigger I.O., plug that into the computer, and then bam, you've got, you know, really high quality drum sounds using Superior Drummer by Tune Track, which Superior Drummer 3 is coming out this week, which is pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have to mess around with this to figure out, like, technically how it's gonna interface. Um, but I'm very hopeful. Now, if I can't get this to work, I think I can return it. I can certainly resell it if I want to, although that is not all that exciting of a prospect right now, if I'm honest. But this is gonna primarily be for studio work and is going to allow me to get a little bit more nuance on the drums here. And then uh, for live performance, honestly, I'm probably just going to use my uh, cat percussion. Um, I can't remember what the module is called, but you guys saw me use it for months on end up until a couple months ago when I reset these up. Um, that's just so compact. It's the entire module and, like, thing you play on just plugs right into the computer. So that, I'm going more extreme, basically. Like, the Trigger I.O. was a compromise. I could use it in studio and live. Um, whereas now I have more flexibility in terms of time and also finances, so I can afford to have, like, a studio, pure studio rig. And then I can have like a live rig that is just more well suited for both of those specific applications, if that makes sense. So let me know if you guys have any questions on this. You guys will get thorough, thorough updates on uh, this as I progress with it, as I learn about it, as I get it set up. And I'll just, you know, keep you guys updated as I usually do. So uh, thoughts or questions, let me know. Um, if you guys have any experience with this or if you have any tips for me using this with Superior Drummer, that would be awesome. Please share those with me and share them in the comments so that everyone can see them. Because, um, you know, as a, as, a, as a good online friend of mine said recently, we're all in this together. and. Uh, if we all want to hear and experience and create better music, then, um, you know, sharing knowledge and information and just being a little more open about that stuff uh, can almost certainly help in that goal. So, back to business here with the guitar. All right, awesome, awesome session right there. Really stoked. Best session I've had in a really long time just as far as pure productivity goes and focus goes. I came into this session really determined to stay on track with my timing, really determined to stay focused on the tasks at hand and knock out my goals for the day. So just uh, very hopeful I can bring that type of fire and intensity to all my sessions. Even if I can't, I really just think it's about delivering the best possible performance for yourself that you can on that given day, at that given time of day. And there's really not much else we can do as people. So got it on the online class front and spent some time finishing up the third module of the class, which was just talking about more post-launch tips and strategies for building the email list up like I was talking about yesterday. And the main thing that you want to do when you're thinking about email is thinking about it like a personal relationship. You're starting a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with someone when you're emailing them back and forth. And the instructor uses like a dating analogy, like you think about it like your first date, hey, we're getting to know each other, like you, you like my look and you like the track that I've given you, so I haven't like polarized you or scared you off yet. So now I'm going to share a little bit more about myself and like you know, she recommends asking at the end, like, just tell me, tell me about yourself, you know, tell me, you know, I'm really interested in what you think about the music or whatever's authentic for you. You just want to start a real conversation, a real relationship with this person. Um, and it, it just got me, it just hit me so hard. It got me thinking about how easy it is to forget that there's other people on the other ends of these phones and computers and emails and social media posts. It's like real human beings, really, you know, sensitive, emotional beings um, who are either resonating with what you're doing or not resonating with what you're doing. And um, that just really got me thinking about building a personal brand, building any type of brand, whether that be in music or business or uh, anything at all, you know, it really should be something authentic. And I think that that was just a great reminder. So I just I'm really appreciating this class right now for that. Not just like a business tip right there, but like a life personal tip of just like, so easy to forget that relationships are really what makes business tick and everyone wants to do business with people they like and people who are friendly to them and understanding and compassionate, like who doesn't want to be around or hear from someone who's a really awesome person who's really nice and understands you and gets your point of view and has common interests. I mean, that's at the end of the day, isn't that like what the Facebooks and the Twitters and the, you know, iPhones of the world are supposed to do, supposed to connect you with people, like make your life better? You know, it's easy to lose sight of that. So that was just a great reminder from that today and I really was appreciative, like I said. So that led me to um, reinvesting in some of my personal communications that sort of dropped off. Some of them are sort of business personal contacts, some of them are just pure personal contacts, and I just realized I'd let those slip, and that that wasn't okay, that really is not the type of person who I'm committed to being. And we all make mistakes, we all get distracted, we all get busy, and our brains and human bodies and minds are just programmed through millennia of evolution to just focus on whatever the heck is right in front of us. 
and sometimes that's the most important thing and sometimes it isn't sometimes the person who's a thousand miles away who emailed you six months ago just to say hey i've been thinking about you and you know here's some music i've been working on like what, what's going on with you sometimes that's the most important thing even though it isn't the most pressing thing in the moment so that was a great reminder um just on the personal front but i really want to carry that into my work with music uh, that's something that's really important to me it's really important to me to deliver a great product or service whatever that product or service that i am advertising might be and it's really important for me to have great customer service, building a relationship with people, and making it like a real awesome human experience, not just a transactional business experience. That's not something I personally enjoy, and you know I've had success with that in other endeavors outside of music, so I really want to bring that aspect of my personality and my commitments into my music practice, especially now that I am basically transforming this into a business as, as we speak. So that was a great reminder, and it's always going to be just in touch with our principles, the most important, deepest guiding forces of our lives. So uh, that was great, and that kind of freed me up and gave, just gave me some really good energy throughout the rest of the session. I got a, session, I got a really good drum practice in, sent some more emails, took a short break, and then just hit that guitar solo hard. Man, I haven't hit anything that hard in a while, guys. <laughs> like, wow. My, you know, I didn't push it too far. You know, in the past, I pushed it too far, like, hurt myself, injured myself. Not, like, injured, injured, like, permanently, but, like, you know, really torn up my hands or just, like, feeling like crap the next day or the next few hours or something. And, like, that I just think is not necessary. I mean, it's the best way to learn and, and build new neural connections and build strength is to push yourself to the limit and then don't go too far past that limit. You know, lean on the limit, go a little bit further past the limit, then kind of take a step back. Okay, go back, push on the limit a little bit more, take a step back, give yourself a chance to recover, push on the limit. So it's that consistency of leaning on your limitations over time that really builds true and lasting uh, strength or accuracy or that kind of thing in my experience. Now, if you guys have different philosophies or experiences with that, let me know. I'm curious because I'm down to try. You know, I'm down to try any extreme method or any moderate method, like whatever. That's just what I found for myself, pushing myself well beyond. It just it makes me not want to show up to the session the next day. Does that make sense? I'm fatigued. It's harder for me to get the long-term thing going. So it's like I leave a little bit of gas in the tank today so that I'm still excited to show up to the session tomorrow and keep moving forward. Um, so that solo is intricate. <laughs> um, it's not crazy complicated, but it's definitely the most, one of the most complicated solos I've ever done. And uh, it's not totally improvisational. So in the past, even some of the very technical solos I've done, I have worked it out like, in, like with my uh, sort of mind first and then fingers at the same time so that I was already comfortable playing what I wanted to play, for the most part. This is a place where I'm really stretching myself to go from where I am to just like purely, okay, what is my ultimate vision of how this solo should be, and let me just take however long it takes for my fingers to catch up with that vision. So that's what I was doing, really slowing things down, trying things, screwing them up, going back to the demo recording, okay, what did I want it to sound like again? Okay, no, that's that what I just thought I figured out, it wasn't it. It's very much like learning a solo from a recording or something like that. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing, actually. Um, so if you've ever learned like a Metallica solo or a Zeppelin solo off a record, this is kind of what I'm doing, but just for my own ideas. So that was great. I did get through the entire solo, at least with the major chunks and major ideas, and now I feel like I can go back and refine it, get it more and more close to where I want it to be, and then just get super, super comfortable playing it at speed so that by the time, it, uh, when the time comes to track it, that's just like, you know, really just thinking about the emotion and embodying the experience of the solo and what I want to communicate, and the technical aspects have already been handled, basically. So that's where I'm at today. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys are out there grinding toward your goals, enjoying the process. Don't forget to have fun with it. I mean, it's it's serious business. Creating something great is, is you know, really takes a lot, and sometimes it's really painful, but you know, even if you're not having fun with that part of the process, I think you can still enjoy it. And even though, like, I've worked really hard and there were times in the session today where I was like, man, I just kind of want to give up and relax, um, I think it's like pushing through that and honoring your commitment to yourself and therefore to everyone else in the world to just, you know, reach for the best that you can be. And that's that's really what I want to do right now, and that's what I'm doing my best to do. So thanks for the support. Thanks for all the encouragement. Um, you know, this channel has just been a great experience, 100% all the way around with, with no drawbacks for me recently. And it's just been fun, and um, it's just been really, really great. Um, I will stop talking now. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be back on Monday with more. Um, as always, once again, I appreciate you guys. Have a great Sunday. Talk to you soon.